Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo is just back earlier this morning from China, where she met with both American business leaders and top Chinese officials, including the premier. All part of the administration's effort to reset relations between the world's two largest economies that were frozen after the U.S. shot down that Chinese spy balloon in February. I spoke with the secretary just moments ago. Secretary Raimondo, thank you so much for being here, jet-lagged as you must be. Uh, first of all, you said that your talks in China were candid but constructive, uh, but that export controls, the ban on export controls is not going to be lifted. That's a non-starter because of national security. But lifting that ban is what China wants most. Mm -hmm. So how do you get past that? Yeah, th thank you for having me. So you put your finger on how complicated and complex this relationship is, but we have to hold the line. I mean, on matters of national security, particularly things like uh, artificial intelligence semiconductors, which we are way ahead of China, and they want Right. in order to uh, expand and improve their military, there can be no room for compromise. That being said, we have a $700 billion economic relationship. Uh, only 1% of that is affected by export controls, even semiconductors. We will continue to ship them you know, billions of dollars of semiconductors, so there's plenty of business to be done, but on the narrow area of emerging technology that they have said Right. They have a civil military fusion strategy. They're crystal clear about their intention. They're trying to get this technology to improve their military, and we have to do everything in our power to prevent that. You met with many American business leaders there, Boeing, mm -hmm. Disney, and American business mem members are saying China is uninvestable. It's becoming uninvestable because it's too risky. Mm -hmm. Did China give you any promises that they would stop raiding American companies, slapping people with espionage charges? Yeah. Gratuitously? You know, it's um, it, actions will tell. So they said all the right things. They said that they wanted to have a predictable environment, due process around regulation. Uh, in fact, the premier and vice premier with whom I met had more than one hour with each of them, recently put out a 24-point plan to attract U.S. investors. But, you know, talk is cheap, right? So, and that's what I said to them. I said that we need to see action. U.S. businesses have an appetite to do business there, but only if it's predictable, if there's a level playing field, and if they feel like they're going to get a fair shake as it relates to regulations. So many businesses with whom I spoke said, just tell us the rules. We'll follow the rules. But just what are the rules? And so I, I pulled no punches in my meetings. They said the right things, and now we'll see how they react. Now, you said that your biggest achievement was opening lines of communication. There are going to be working groups. That's something that, mm -hmm. frankly, we did not get from other cabinet level meetings, including mm -hmm. Secretary Blinken's. But lines of communication are really important on trade. They're critically important on military. And still, there's no military to military channel of communication. There's no hotline. Yeah, it's a huge problem that you point out. It's a huge problem. You know, I keep reminding people we have to put this in context. I'm the first U.S. Commerce Secretary to be on the ground in China in more than five years. So some people are saying, what's the big deal? You've opened official communication. It's a huge deal, right? I talked to probably 120 business leaders myself before going to China across a range of industries in the U.S. Everyone, I said to them, what do you need? What's productive? Every one of them said we are desperate for a channel of communication where we can have candid dialogue to resolve issues. The other thing, Andrea, as you know so well, better than most, lack of communication increases the chances of miscalculation, increased tension, mis misassessment. And the Chinese said that to me you know, when I was there. They said they don't want misassessment and miscalculation. So I am, I'm going to really put my back into getting the most out of these dialogues as I can. And how do you trust them? You said you raised the issue that your, you know, unclassified emails were hacked by China. Yeah. So you raised it with them. How did they respond? Yeah. Uh, with uh, feigned surprise. <laughs> uh, but I was clear. How can we build trust, you know, with instances like this? Trust is hard. 
you know, trust, trust is hard. I think we have to be eyes wide open, but we have to be practical. Yeah, I think that there are things we can do. We have to be pragmatic about it. And we just, we can do both at the same time. We can promote our business interests and trade and have commerce in practical ways and also be as firm as ever on our national security. NBC News is reporting today that there is now uh, no expectation of formal talks or even sidebar talks with team President Xi and President Biden at the G20 next week in India. Mm -hmm. uh, what about expectations that they might get together, which has been expected in November, with President Xi expected to come to San Francisco mm -hmm. for another summit, an APEC summit? It would be, we certainly hope so. You know, it's a good opportunity. President Biden has done a magnificent job through his career in developing a great relationship or a productive relationship with President Xi. And I have no doubt if he were to come, it would be productive. I invited, um, you know, my counterpart to spend for us to have some time together. And I think that will happen. Uh, in fact, I said we should have more informal communication, not just in the formal dialogue, a step at a time. A step but, at a time. But for your counterpart to visit? Yes, in November. The U.S. Yes, yeah. yeah. And hopefully he and I could share a meal and continue our discussion when he comes. Well, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Especially after just getting back from China overnight. Thank you.